Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial I want to show you how you can create these race position systems so that you can see your position in the race in the right upper corner. So let's go! So first of all we go to our Firebird or basic car, whatever you have, and we have to create a few more variables. So the first one will be race length. Race length will be in float. The second one is last distance also on float. The third one is distance point. This is an integer. And the last one is the position itself, of course, as an integer. Great, we are done here. So we can close this and go to our racing widget here from the last time. I add up one more thing, so just some text in our right upper corner here and make this a variable position text. So let's go to the graph and make a custom event for this. So add custom event show position. First of all we take out our finish boolean here to ask if the race is finished. We get the player pawn cast to the default car. So this is always your parent car, keep that in mind. And we go from the faults to the cars here. Then we get the position. Take out the position text here. Set text like that. And then we just connect the position with the text. Have a little delay here of 0 0.1 seconds. And then we just call the show position function again. This will run until the game is finished. Great, so we are done here as well. We can close this and let's open up our race actor here. Go to the event graph where we have our interact when we start the race. So one thing is important, just choose as an cars array your parent class car. So you create one car as a parent class and then you just create child classes for different cars. So that's the best way to do it. So we go from the event interact and the first thing is we take out our cars here and we just say set array element. And the first element in the cars array will be our car itself. We check the size to fit here, compile and save this. The second thing is we go back here to the countdown and before the set visibility from the last part and we just call from the widget the show position. Like that. Great. The next part is to optimize our spawn bots function. So let's go in here. I just delete everything to rewrite it. So we take out our start here, get the race position two, as well as the position three and four. And from this we go get world transform for every position here, like that. And now we just say make array. Hit three pins and just connect it here, like that. Then we say for each loop, like this. Right click, split structure pin. We go from the loop body and just say spawn AI from class. Choose our parent class, in my case the Firebird connect the location and the rotation, and that's it. Then we just cast to our parent class, like this, take out the cars again, and just say set array element. Connect the Firebird to the item, go from the array index, integer plus integer, and connect it. So let's go to the start bots function. We have to change up a few things here. So we have the cars array, we have the for loop, and we just set the active path and the AI status. 
So let's pull this out here because we need a few more things. The first thing is I created a um, spline component. So just add a spline component here, this one. And the good part, as you can see, I created a third spline component in the middle of the race. So this will be the track where it calculates the distance to the endpoint. So just draw it here and we go to the start spots again, take out the spline component here like this. We go down from the array element and say get actor location. As well from the track we say get location at spline point. The spline point will be zero and the coordinate space will be world. Then we say vector minus vector connected with here. Take this out here and say vector length. As well from the track we say get spline length. Say float plus float connected. And then we just go from the array element and want to set the last distance as well as the set race length. Connected here like this. The last distance is a return value from the vector length and the plus value is the race length. And the rest can be still the same. Compound save this. So we now set the race length and the last distance to the next spline point for every core. So the next part is to actually calculate the distance to every spline point. So the idea is that it calculates the distance from every core to the next spline point and subtract it from the race length. So at the end, the car with the lowest race length is the first one and with the second one and go on. Great. So we have to create a new function for this. Let's call this calc late distance. We take out our cause array here, say for each loop. We take out as well the track here, go from the array element, get distance point. Then we go from the track and say get location at spline point. Put this to world and the distance point is the point index. Again from the array element we say get actor location like this. Again we say vector minus vector put this down here, say vector length. Then we want to set the position of every core to the array index like that. Then we go from the array element again, get the race length, get the last distance, Go from last distance, float minus float. The vector length goes inside here. From race length, we say again, float minus float. Put this inside here. And then we go from the array element again. We want to set the race length like this to the return value here. Then we go from the array element again and want to set the last distance like that and the vector length goes into the last distance. Then again we go from the array element and want to get the distance point, say integer plus integer, leave this to 1, go from the last distance here and say float is below another float here, put this to 500. Need a branch to ask like this. And then again we go from the array element back to here and set the distance 
point to the return value here and on the true case we want to set it. And the last thing is again we go from the element back to here and want to set the last distance again to the vector length like this. So we want to set for every core the position. We calculate the distance from every core to the next spline point. Then we subtract the race length minus the last distance. We want of course set the new race length and the new last distance. Check is the last distance under 500. That means you reach the next spline point. If this is true, we want to set the distance to the next spline point and set again the last distance. Great. So this will be calculating the race length for every core, but now we have to sort the array to know which position does every core have. For this, I would highly recommend to install the plugin for the library extension. So when you go to the plugins, we have this low entry extended standard library. Be sure to enable it because with this you get a sort function. We go from the course array here and just say sort and you will ask to sort object array copy like this. So for this we go from the comparator and say create event. Select create a matching function like this. We cost to the default parent class here for both objects A and B like this. We get the wraith length in both situations like this. And we check is the first one, is the first float below the second float like this and this will be the result like that. So this will be our actually sort function. If you want, you can rename it to sort. Let's go back to the calculate distance function here and we already select the sort function. Now we go from the return value and say for each loop, go from the complete down here, up here, cost to the firebird again, so the default parent clause like this. Go from the array index, integer plus integer, leave this to one. And we go from the firebird and want to set the position again to this return value. So this is just for that the position is plus one, so you don't have the position zero. Great, so now we go back to the event graph and call it our calculate distance function. Have a little delay here of 0 0.1 seconds. The complete goes back into calculate. Let's see if this works. We hit play. Start our race here like this. Every car spawns. The race is going. My position is 1 in the right upper corner. So let's overtake someone. Position 2. Position 3. And this guy also. Come on position four. And when we now drive forward, position three, position two, and one. Great. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know. And yeah, goodbye.